and uh, practice. So <clears throat> these are the things that we'll uh, try to accomplish uh, over today, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, in today's lecture, you'll have your, your uh, three problems that you'll, I think it's three, that you'll need to do uh, for lab. We'll discuss them in lab. Uh, I will admit that you you should you should have enough after today to do the first problem, but uh, Tuesday we'll uh, go over the information to do the rest of the problems. So uh, what I'm what I'm anticipating is that we will oh and I'll also in between you know, probably Monday because you won't be looking at it over the weekend anyway. Uh, so probably early Monday morning, I'll post Tuesday and Wednesday's lab. So if you want to kind of look at it, but it's not my expectation that you have all of the homework problems done uh, by, by lab, at least not for Tuesday's group, because uh, problems two and three, we won't be going over until Tuesday morning. But uh, we will we will go over it in lab, so we'll probably spend a lot more time. But Wednesday's group, really, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting you to have it all done, ready. We high fiving each other, ready to go home and eat some turkey. All right. So one of the things that that we look at is this is this balance. These three factors of patient factors, drug factors, and bug factors. A lot of what you've been, well, not a lot, all of what you've been talking about over this course has been patient factors. So we're introducing, or I'm introducing the concept of uh, pharmacodynamics, which is really going to involve the, the uh, bug and the drug. So how we look at it, when you're, when you're looking at those patient factors, pharmacokinetics is how the body affects the drug. Right, we talked about adding absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Uh, but we look at that in its relationship with pharmacodynamics. So how the drug also affects the body in things that we call efficacy, and we've called either safety or toxicity in those things. So I've asked a lot of questions. Okay, you calculated C man and C max, but what does that mean? Well, that case, what that means to me at this point is I put the numbers in the formula and this is what came out. So it's like, nah, it means something more than that. So that's what, we're, what we'll be uh, talking about uh, today. What does it mean to you when we're looking at our C-max or our peak? Well, it means something to me, and we'll go over this in a little bit in more detail, when I'm really looking at concentration-dependent uh, medications. So for my examples, I think the student was asking me, um, about this, about these principles, I'm going to, you know, put more information in our PT lecture that we're going to do in December. But right now, I'm just talking about antibiotics. But antibiotics aren't the only uh, things that follow these principles, okay? But I'm just going to focus on antibiotics so that you can understand the principles and how they apply to um, some select group of, of drugs. But these aren't the only drugs. So we'll talk about other medications that have concentration-dependent principles, but it still follows the same principle. Your C-max is very important to efficacy, all right? Then you'll have some uh, medications where really your area under the curve is more important. How do you distinguish between area under the curve and C-max? Anyone? Anyone? Give it a shot. I think every time I ask a question, everybody look at me. Not me, Doc. Okay, so what I would what I would say is that as I mentioned before, your dose drives your C-max, right? Your initial dose, whatever dose it is. So if I gave 1,500 milligrams once a day you would expect a higher C-max than if I gave 1,000 milligrams once a day, right? Yes. Or do you need to put it in your calculator? Mm -hmm. You don't? What about the rest of your class? You think they do? I don't think so. They don't either? How? 
How do you think that? The air and the curve would be different. Well, that how, how do you why do you think the area of the curve is different? Because it's the accumulation of, of all the concentration of a certain period of time. Exactly right. So your area under the curve, if you say it in the you said accumulation of concentrations, I'll say amount, same thing. Over a period of time. So if we say that period of time is 24 hours, if you gave a thousand milligrams in 24 hours versus 1,500 milligrams in 24 hours, the area of the curve would be different. Also, the peak would be different, which is what I asked about the peak. The peak would be different if you gave 1,500 milligrams all at once, or even if you infused it, as long as the infusion time is equal, 1,500 milligrams is going to have a higher peak than uh, 1,000 milligrams. We don't need to calculate for that. But what if I gave 1,500 milligrams all at once versus 500 milligrams every eight hours? What would happen with that rate? Right? Nobody know? It'll essentially reach that peak? Over It'll time? eventually reach that peak? It's gonna be the same. What is it? What's gonna be the same? C max will be the same. C max will be the same. No way. No way. Y'all sleep this morning. We calculated all these different things, and you're trying to tell me if you put a dose, assuming that all variables are the same. I can write the equation up on the board. Is the elimination constant gonna change? No. Is the volume of distribution gonna change? No. Is your dosing interval gonna change? Yes, one, you said 24 hours, and one is every eight hours, but there's no way 500 milligrams, I don't care if you give it every eight hours, is gonna reach a C max, which are dose as the numerator, that 1,500 milligrams would. There is no way. No way. We'll put it in calculator and see. Because it's very simple, your dose drives your C max, period. If you get three times the dose, there's no way you're gonna reach that city max with uh, 500 milligrams, a dose a third of the size, no way. But the area under the curve is the same. Because you gave the same amount of drug in the same amount of time. The area under the curve is the same. So, <clears throat> medications where it's important for a more area under the curve than necessarily C-max, why would you give 1,500 milligrams when you can give 500 uh, three times a day? Same, same effect is going to happen. Um, then you have a third concept that we'll talk about that is slightly different. It's what we call time-dependent properties. Area under the curve doesn't matter so much um, and C max doesn't matter. It's just whatever time this medication is above this MIC, it's working. So we'll just talk about those three principles. So those are uh, pharmacodynamic <coughs> principles that are affected by pharmacokinetics. Yeah. What's the difference between antisocial and absorption? What, what's the difference between what? Antisocial. Oh, I think that must be um, a typo. So two, two. Um, oh, whoa, 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 hold on. Let me let me stop for a second. I that's don't even worry about this. I should have taken this off, but it's not a typo. Um. Okay. Okay. I, I will. I will just explain this. This uh, slightly. This is a uh, concentration time curve period, so oral or IV. Obviously, in a oral dose, you will have a, an absorption phase, right? But in um, IV, you will not, right? So, but that, but that I, I, um, I meant to take this, take this off because I'm not really trying to distinguish between an, an absorption type phase versus an absorption phase. But it is different, it's not the same. But I meant to take that off. 
All, only things we've been focusing on is uh, your post distribution, which is an, uh, an adsorption phase, and your <coughs> elimination phase. So I, I meant to take that off and call it post distribution. That's what you guys have been talking about. All right, so some, some other principles that are important when we're talking about antibiotics is uh, post antibiotic effect. You may hear uh, some talk about post antibiotic effect. And I wanna just kinda show that for a second. Uh, and what that's saying is that you still have suppression of organisms just by the presence of that antibody. So it's not really a principle that is um, well understood. We just realized that some medications have that effect. So aminoglycosides are one of those. If I can explain it to you logically, I told you, this is the minimum inhibitory concentration. This is when we should have uh, suppression of microorganisms, right? What happens when it's below that? Should we have suppression of microorganisms? Technically, no. But with some drugs, like aminoglycosides, we still have suppression of microorganisms, even after it's below the MIC. So we call that post-antibiotic effect. So after you've given this antibiotic, you still have suppression of microorganisms, even though there is no uh, reason for it. It's not above the MIC anymore, but just because of its presence uh, in the plasma concentration, you still have suppression of microorganisms. So that's called uh, post uh, antibiotic effect. You also have another effect here that we call persistence effect. So what, what we have seen here is that this is more of a concentration uh, dependent type of effect. So if you increase the concentration, you increase the uh, activity of the medication. So the more you give, the better it is. Do you think that's the case for all drugs? No. So that's not a uh, uh, that's not something that you can say. Oh, of course that makes sense. I mean, if I get five milligrams, ten milligrams is going to be better. That's not necessarily the case. That is the case for some drugs, uh, and those are the ones that have. Uh, when we're talking about antibiotics, those are the ones that we can say they have uh, persistence effects. Now, a part of that is the time as well. So how long do they have these effects? We know some have that effect for a short period of time, and uh, you know, some have no effect like that, but some have some uh, for a short period of time, for a moderate period of time, and then for a prolonged period of time. Uh, so we'll kind of talk about that uh, as well. So this is a summary slide. If you're gonna put an asterisk on something, put an asterisk on this one. I listed medications on here, uh, to make it comprehensive when we're talking about antibiotics, but the ones that are in red are the only ones we're going to talk about. All right, period. That's all we're going to talk about. Aminoglycosides will be our example for concentration dependent with prolonged persistence effect. This is kind of a misnomer, but you can you can uh, make arguments uh, for this. This is how it's classified when you look in the literature. But, you know, and over the last 20, 25 years in pharmacy, this has been a, a trick question, okay? This is what I mean. Is vancomycin concentration dependent or time dependent? The reality is, we don't know. I mean, let me, tell you, let me say it a different way. Both. That's the reality. But what we knew 25 years ago, whereas what we know now means that answer has changed. 25 years ago, they asked you, vancomycin, concentration of time dependent, everybody would say, concentration dependent. But in a true concentration, we didn't know about persistence effects at that time, but a true concentration dependent, that simply means if I give a higher dose and I get a higher concentration, then it'll be better. And that is not the case with vancomycin. Higher doses might be better than lower doses, but just because I give more, doesn't mean it's going to be better. So if I gave somebody 1,500 milligrams versus 1,000 milligrams, that doesn't mean 1,500 milligrams is better. It does not. But it does have some concentration-dependent properties, which again, are persistence effects. Persistence effects are concentration-dependent properties. But 
we do know that in the example that I gave before, area under the curve does matter. So if 1,500 milligrams is effective, it's going to be effective whether I gave the 1,500 milligrams once a day or if I gave 500 milligrams three times a day. It's going to be the same. And that is not concentration dependent, right? Because I just told you, a 1,500 milligram dose is going to have a higher peak than a 500 milligram dose. And in a concentration dependent antibiotic, that big tip, the one with the highest peak is better. Okay? So you see how it's kind of tricky? It does have concentration dependent properties, but it's really more about area under the curve. So we're going to look at vancomycin about that. True term dependent antibiotics, we'll look at. If you look at most of these, these are beta lactams. We're going to look at penicillin as our as our example. But true, when I say true time dependent properties, it means hey, the C max doesn't matter. It's not about C max. It's about when it goes above the MIC, it's effective. And I'm not going to say I'm not going to say that uh, truly. When I say it's above the MIC. The MIC isn't always the efficacy, if you will. It just says that is the minimum level where you'll see suppression. It may not be enough suppression to be therapeutic, but it does reach suppression. So you may hear this doesn't mean anything as far as, you know, um, what we're any, this won't be on a test or anything. I'll give you this information, but I just want you to understand the concept that for certain drugs, we may say you need three times, your concentration needs to be three times the MIC. So if the MIC is one, what would your concentration need to be? Three, right? So if it's down to one, is it therapeutic? No. No. We say, oh no, it's the MIC. We know that it's therapeutic at three. So that is that time that target that we want. As long as it's at three, why do I need it at six? Why do I need it at 18? I just need it above three. So, I just want to do a trick question. Not a trick, but this is an easy question, but I want to throw this at you. I told you there are three variables that we can control, right? What are those three variables? Those. Those. No, that's wrong. I heard two of them. I heard the dose or size of dose. That's true. I heard dosing interval or tile. That's true. What's the third one? Time of the infusion. Time of the infusion. Right? So, in those three choices, A, B, C, dose, B. What was B? You waiting right there? Let me see. Unless you're praying for me, Jim. <laughs> Y'all need to cut the light back on? <laughs> B is um, dosing interval. C is time of the infusion. Well, the concentration dependent antibiotics. If you haven't reached your goal, I'm trying to be uh, not tricky. <laughs> He's not about tricky. You try to be tricky. If you have to reach your goal plasma concentration, I don't want to give away the answer. Dang it, that's what I'm trying to say. If you have to reach your goal plasma concentration, which would you want to adjust? The dose. The dose. Huh? Dose, a dose. I heard someone say interval. interval. You said interval? You want to adjust the interval? Okay, all right. That was a tricky question because it depends on which goal we didn't reach. Oh, yeah. Right? So that was kind of a tricky question. Which goal were you thinking? Because I said plasma concentration. Because if you make the interval smaller, it builds up, so it will increase concentration. Now, that, that while that is true, while that is true, remember what I said before. You can give it every eight hours, 500 milligrams every eight hours, you won't still have a, a C max of 1500 if I gave it once a day. Can we say the interval is- um... Even though it'll build up. So certainly, remember our, our homework. I had you calculate bolus dose, right? 
versus infusion. Mm -hmm. And we said that, hey, if I infuse it over time, it's not going to reach the same C-max if I just gave it all at once, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just showing you the relationship between the time of the infusion and the dose. But when we calculated, remember when we rounded? Mm -hmm. You say if I round up versus down, what did it do really in your dosing interval? Did it really change your C-max that much? When you put that in your calculator, you pretty much came up with the same initial concentration. Yeah, your number may have been a little different, but what's the difference in five and six? It's not an appreciable difference if you change it from 500 to 1500. So yes, of course, your C-max will change because the C-min changed, right? When I gave the dose on top of the C-min, yeah, it increased the C-max, but the proportion of what that dose contributed to the rise in concentration is exactly the same. So the only reason why C-max increased is because C-min increased. So your dosing interval impacts your C-min. Mathematically, you say, well, yeah, it increased my C-max. Well, it increased your C-max because it increased your C-min. Your C-max is sitting on top of your C-min. You increase it, of course that number will be the same. But you can't increase your C-max by just manipulating the dosing interval, especially not without affecting your um, C-min. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out. We'll talk about scenarios. I'm going to throw out scenarios, and we're going to uh, take a look at it and tell me what you're going to adjust. But really, dose is going to be very important in concentration because we just said C-max is the thing that you're looking for. We might adjust the dosing interval because, as I mentioned, we have two goals. We have a C-max and C-min. So if it's not being eliminated properly, again, that's a safety thing, not an efficacy thing. But for efficacy, dose is going to be what's important. What about here? What do you think? Hmm? Dose, interval, time of the infusion. You said both? All three of them. All three of them. Now, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a reason why you want to change everything here. Huh? The time interval? Huh? So, <clears throat> time interval, no. Here, remember I said area under the curve is the thing that's most important. Well, I'm going to go through all of this. Um, this is just a summary slide. Area under the curve is what's going to be most important. So, your dose and dosing interval. It's the 1500 versus the 500 uh, three times a day uh, situation. So if I want to give 1500 milligrams and the patient can, um, in, most, in most cases, what you're probably want to go on and do, uh, do is give it in divided doses because area under the curve, not C max, is what's important, right? Um, if the patient can't tolerate those divided doses, so let's say three times a day. Patient can't tolerate three times a day, we'll cut it down to two times a day. Patient can't tolerate two times a day, then that's the only time we'll give it one time a day. Right, because the one time a day is gonna have a higher C-max than the twice a day versus the three times a day. And I don't need this C-max that high. I just need to give that amount of drug. So in most cases, that's how we make the adjustment. The amount of drug is what's important. Oh, and then time dependent, it's gonna be your infusion time. All right, so let's go through each one real quick. Concentration dependent, which one are we looking at? C-max. Yes, aminoglycosides though. Oh. The goal here, high peak serum concentration. Optimization, make it better, I'm looking at my peak. So if I hit a peak of six, a peak of eight is better. Peak of 10 is better, okay? So higher peak is what we're looking at. Um, so as I mentioned before, and I said, uh, y'all asked me this question, but it, ain't, it doesn't apply, it applies now. We have three aminoglycosides that we're looking at, genomycin, tobamycin, and amicacin. The short thing I can tell you is that everything that I'm going to mention, these two are interchangeable. They have the same pharmacokinetic profile. They're interchangeable. Everything you're going to see, the weight-based dosing for one is the same as the other, 
Rounding guidelines for one is the same as the other. Genomycin and tobramycin have the same pharmacokinetic profile. Amicacin does not. It has a different one. So I know you see three drugs here, but really you only have to look at two because genomycin and tobramycin are pretty much the same. The rest of the pharmacokinetic profile is the same for all amino glycosides. What I mean is volume and distribution, their half-life is, is about the same. So do we need to know the pharmacokinetics profile for amicacin? No? What do you mean by that? Because you said those two are interchangeable and that one is different. So, uh, no. What I'm, what I'm saying is 10 milligrams of genomycin and 10 milligrams of tropomycin are the same. Um. But whereas you can use 10 milligrams of genomycin, you will have to use 70 milligrams of amicacin. Okay. So they don't have the same. But the rest of their pharmacokinetic profile, so dosing is different, mm. but the rest of it is the same. And you calculated this. You looked at half-lives and your half-lives, somebody calculated two hours, you know, it changed a little bit, went up. You can see as renal function changes, what happens to the half-life? Huh? It goes longer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We say right here, a patient who does not have any renal function, amino glycosides will be in there for 30 to 60 hours, which is a huge change from what normally happens, right? So as renal function declines, half-life goes up, right? What about that second category? Remember I said AUC to MIC is the one that's important. So it's the amount of drug. That's your goal of optimization, the amount of drug that we're going to use. This is the profile that we've been using. Of course, I've been giving you that information. So we see, um, does vancomycin have a wider or a smaller distribution than amino glycosides? Wider. Fifty-five? You say water? No. I don't think anybody agrees with you. Right? They real quiet. I'm so low double. You gonna he gonna be by yourself. Okay. Anybody going for smaller? Same. You going for smaller? Same. No same. How would I know? Because the other one was point twenty five. This one is zero to one. Exactly. This ain't hard. <clears throat> so it's a wider uh, volume of distribution. So here's where we pick up on weight-based dosing. So if I'm using a dosing weight, um, this is why with amino glycosides, all I really care about is the lean body weight, not the total body weight. Amino glycosides don't distribute to fat. Does vancomycin? Yeah. So we're looking at the total body weight uh, with vancomycin all the time. Uh, there's some arguments which we won't do because when you go hospital to hospital, most hospitals um, are going, and, and actually the guidelines say use total body weight. There's some arguments and people have done studies. Obviously, if I do uh, pharmacokinetic numbers on it, you're going to see that for morbidly obese patients, while it may have a wider volume of distribution, than amino glycosides or some other antibiotics. It's not so wide that it really distributes it uh, into that much fat, okay? So, said so for morbidly obese patients, maybe we should do an adjusted body weight. That's what some uh, have argued. But in most um, hospitals, what they're going to do uh, in their protocols is they're just gonna use total body weight. And in the event that you calculated this tremendous dose, you just gonna round down. <laughs> and you say, I'm not, I'm not giving this person 4,000 milligrams, no way. We'll just use this and we'll get levels and see, see where, where, where it fits. I won't be giving you any more for the OD spaces to test this theory, okay? So just remember for vancomycin, we're gonna use the total body weight. What about for penicillin? So what's important with penicillin is just the time above the MIC. So remember, long durations of exposure 
How do you manipulate the duration of exposure? Changing the infusion time. Well, actually, that's not, that's only partially <coughs> true. Can't, huh? Yeah, that's only partially true. That's not the only way you can uh, lengthen duration of exposure. Right? If I, when I drew the um, plasma concentrations on top of each other, right? Could not, let's say, couldn't I make sure that it's above the MIC by giving more, more often? Couldn't I do that? Wouldn't that lengthen the duration of exposure? Oh, sure, mathematically. But what does it do by giving a bigger dose? Over more time. Could be unsafe. If all I needed was this plasma concentration, let's call that plasma concentration three. Let's call that 30. Is that better if all I needed was three? No. So, you know, you can say, I tell you, watch this, Dr. Kim. I can give it a longer duration by increasing the dose and shortening the interval. And I'll tell you, you can. But I'm going to ask you, why would you do that? So, the way to only lengthen the duration of exposure is by adjusting the time of the infusion. So you talked about continuous infusions, right? I can just put it right there. Ha, 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 ha. We done. Look at all this drug you say by doing that. So just change the time of the infusion. What I can tell you is in beta-lactams, they've said, all oh, right, hey, that, that, that makes sense. Let's just do it by continuous infusion. And what they found is that there's really no improvement on continuous infusion versus what we call an extended infusion. So with these drugs, if, if um, as you can see, none of these are 100%. Those percentages mean the time greater than the MIC. And what I've drawn here is in 24 hours, 100% greater than time over MIC. And that's not necessary. What you need for penicillins is just for 40 or 50% of the time for it to be above the MIC. So, trick question, not trick question, easy question. If the time interval is 12 hours, 12 hours, how long do I need it to be above the MIC? Four penicillin. I need it above the MIC. So I don't need it 100%. 100% is not any better than six hours. So what you're going to see is an infusion for six. You know, that will, the infusion doesn't have to be six hours, right? Because we're going to have some elimination part. I just need it to where by the time it gets to six hours, it's still above the MIC. And all I need to put it at the concentration that when I turn the infusion off, it'll still stay above the MIC for six hours. All right, you can see the volume of distribution for, uh, what's the percent of taste of bacteria? Anybody know? Brand name? Zosa. Zosa. Yeah. Zosa. Very widely used, very uh, commonly used uh, antibody. So this is just a, a picture of what I'm talking about. This is one dosing strategy. I'll call it traditional, where you would give it every, um, Six, uh, I'm sorry, every eight hours. This is depicting an eight hour dosing interval. So if I gave it by the traditional strategy, where I infuse it over one hour, this is the plasma con uh, concentration time curve that it gives me. So we see a little bit over four hours or about four hours, we, um, we're below the MIC, right? If we extended that infusion to three hours, what happened to the peak? 
increased. Went down, so it's lower. Is that what we found in our um, problem that we did? When we used the bolus dosing method versus the infusion method? Mm -hmm. Right? The longer the infusion, the shorter for the same dose and dosing interval, the lower the C max will be. Right? Why is that important? Because some drugs work at their peak, right? Uh, it's the opposite. Some drugs do work at their peak, but for this one, this is not one of them. So why would we want a high peak, the you know, when we don't need it, right? So that's what you're saying, right? Some drugs do work at the peak, but this is not one of them. So why do we want a higher peak? So having a lower peak is fine, as long as it's gonna be effective. But you also see if I infuse it, if I increase the time of the infusion, and then, of course, the these are going down at the same rate, it infused and it got to this peak at about three hours. When did this get to the peak? About one hour. So it stayed above the MIC for six hours. Which one is better? Increasing the time. The three-hour three three infusion is better, right? Because it stayed above the MIC for a longer period of the dosing interval. All right, so let's get a little bit more specific. This is the conventional or traditional dosing method for aminoglycosides, weight-based dosing. For genomycin and tobramycin, as I mentioned, we'll have the same strategy. We'll use anywhere from one milligram per kilo to about two and a half milligrams per kilo. So if I were you from this point on, I would know that. If I'm using genomycin or tobamycin, I'm gonna go from one milligram per kilo to two and a half milligrams per kilo. What's the patient weight? That's all you need to know, right? I can dose it from there. Your peak uh, levels will be anywhere from three to 12, and your trough levels will be anywhere from less than one to less than two. Depending on the microorganism now, so let me, I'm, I'm giving you kind of a range, but this is never gonna be your goal from three to 12. I was about to ask you that. Okay, I'm just telling you, those are the goals. Typically, the goals are um, in denominations of two, so three to five, six to eight, 10 to 12, something like that. But it's gonna always range from three to 12. Same way with here, I'll tell you if the trough needs to be less than two. Less than two is fine. Less than 1.5 or less than one. So that's normally the troughs you'll see. Same way for the interval, where it'll be based on their renal, their age and renal function. So if someone less than 65, as long as their renal function is greater than 60, we can give it every eight hours. If they're over 65, as long as their renal function is greater than 60, we want to change that to every 12 hours. And then any age, if there's a decline in renal function, we're going to give it less often. Does that make sense? So we memorize this chart as well? No. No. You don't need to memorize it. You're talking about like four tests? No. Mm -hmm. I'll provide this for you. I'm just telling you how to use it, okay. right? So you'll need to know their age, their renal function, and then what dose mm -hmm. animal. Same way with amicacin. As you can see, I told you it doesn't have the same uh, profiles, normally five to seven and a half milligrams per kilo, higher peak uh, and trough levels. Uh, so 15 to 40 and five to 10. So this is the conventional dosing method. So I think your first problem asked you to follow the conventional dosing method. So this is what we're talking about here. So let's go through something real quick. Uh, what time? 949. 949, so I have six minutes, that's it. One, one, one. <laughs> Yeah, professors every day been going over giving me reduced time, so give me six minutes. <laughs> All right, so uh, 
You, you guys understand the concepts here? I'm using gender minus and what does and what would I do? You have to calculate it out, right? You're gonna use ideal body weight unless the total body weight is less than the ideal body weight or if the total body weight is greater than 30%. Do we think it'll be adjusted? Highly unlikely, right? Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely that it's adjusted. So it'll either be ideal or total body weight, right? You can calculate the credit and clearance. Um, and then with the KEL, you can calculate uh, what the half-life will be. But here's what I want to show you. Um, then, of course, you can calculate this uh, loading dose and maintenance dose based on the, the, the target levels that you have. And you can estimate what the C-max is. But this is the part I want to show you. F. Do y'all have this already? Can I erase it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> A lot of times, pharmacy students, they, they think, as long as I know the information, that's all I need, and that is not true. You have to know it and have to be able to do it. So, try, try it out. So, you know that you need to see max, and you need to see men, right? Mm -hmm. I want these levels. But you're going to have to provide more information than that. Didn't we just say, or not today, but we've said before, when are we drawing our C-max and C-min? At steady state. And when is steady state? Five half lives, right? Oh, that like that. <laughs> oh my God. That shouldn't have been working your brain at all. Five half lives, that should just jump out your mouth. Oh. Five half lives. Okay. So do you need to know when the half life is? Yes. In yes. order to do that, just multiply by five. I forgot yes. to put my tie on. It's still sitting on my desk. Yeah, you got to put five half lives. Tell me what that time is. What else do you need to know? No, you don't necessarily need to know the regular method. What you need to know is, huh? Dose and yeah, you need to know the dosing interval, sure. Yes. But what you need to know is at the half-life, mm -hmm. whatever that is, five half life. So mm -hmm. let's say half-life uh, is three hours. Mm -hmm. So 15 hours left. We need to know when we reach that half-life, where we are on the plasma concentration time curve. Do we just say, hey, five half lives at 15 hours gone, draw a level? What is that level? Is it the peak? Is it the trough? It's the peak. It's the peak? I think so. No. No. It's the peak. When it's the peak, right? It's the peak here. It's your trough here. When are we going to get here? That's what you need to know. So, what is this? The initial, the initial dose. Initial dose. Right. So that should be the initial dose. No, it's not the initial dose. That's the time the infusion started. Oh. Right? Whatever time this is when the infusion started. So when is this? Two months. That uh so what you want to know is when the infusion started, yes, 15 hours, we know we're at steady state. Mm -hmm. But where your uh, C-max is going to be when the infusion, at, at some time related to when the infusion started, right? So you're, let's say you um, did the infusion in most cases, not most cases, amino glycoside cases, your C-max, is going to be, you'll, you'll reach C-max 30 minutes after the infusion stops.
So you'll stop the infusion, 30 minutes, it'll still be going up. But 30 minutes after the infusion, you should be at the maximum concentration. All right? Same thing here. And someone asked me this, does the plasma concentrated time curve reach zero? Yeah, at some point, but do we wait for it to reach zero before we give it again? Mm -hmm. So it's still drug there, right? Thirty minutes before the next dose. Are the guidelines that we'll use? All right. Let's test it. If we gave the dose today, oh, today or not? Mm -hmm. What time will we order our C max and C -min? What day and time will we order our C max to? So it should be. What's the day? 19. And 9 o'clock? What did I say? I, I don't remember what the dosing interval was. Huh? What's the dosing interval? Huh? N11? What's the interval? No, what, what's the dosing interval? Oh, I think we were supposed to calculate. <laughs> I think we were supposed to calculate. I am done with this. Yeah, I'm sorry. So let's say the dosing interval is every 12 hours. Okay. What does the next dose do? 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody calculate the half-life for me. I gave the KDL. Don't we need to know that? Oh, we're going to be doing this well. No, 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 no. What's the KDL? 0.6, 0.3, 0.5, 0.5. Oh, oh. oh. he, um, 0.178? Yeah. So when does it happen? Four hours. Four, four hours? Four hours? So, so you're right. okay. uh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I gave that as an example. Okay, so at 20 hours, we okay. should be at steady state. Okay. Okay. All right. So are we at 20 hours? So we're gonna give another dose, right? Yes. When? Nine. At nine? No, no. Okay. Yeah, nine a.m. Yes. What yeah. day? The twentieth. Are we at steady state? We're, yes, yeah. We're, we're at steady state, right? We're past, yeah. We passed it. We I mean, we passed it. We like, I mean, but steady state. We <laughs> steady state is the plateau, right? How you gonna be past it if okay, you're still yes, giving it? Okay, it's plateau. You're at <laughs> no, steady state. I, mean. I know what you mean, but you know, when you say you passed it, I'm like, ooh. So here, it's twenty-four. We're at steady state. So when are we gonna uh, get our so what's, what's the first level we're going to get? We're at steady state now. You're going to get C-max? So when are you going to get C-max? What date and time? 11, 20? Oh, okay, okay. okay. It should be at 1. I thought it was at 1. No, 130. 130? I just put... The date. the date. Oh, the date. sorry. I haven't gonna put a time yet. <laughs> I think it's what time? Ten, eleven, twelve, one, one thirty. One thirty. C match at one thirty. I don't know. Uh, Twenty hours. Twenty hours, right? Plus thirty minutes. But then he says something. Thirty minutes. 
Yeah. When do we use 30 minutes? No, no, no. No. You don't use 30 minutes? No. He said 30 minutes after the infusion stops. So when it stops? So if it's, if you call it at 9 p.m., your next 20 hours is at 1. Okay, one. So you don't collect it until one thirty. Bam. Okay. Is that one thirty? One thirty. The final answer? Yeah. Okay. Y'all was confused. I was scared. Okay. Because it says thirty minutes. Hold on, hold on. Now you ask a question. Y'all extended my six minutes, man. I thought this was gonna be easy, huh? I did. I gave you an infusion time. It said point five hours. What about her? So what? So what? Before? How? Because he said. It's not that hard. He said after. It's not that hard. Nine thirty. What? What? I say one thirty. I don't know. Okay. I say one thirty. But let's see what happens. That's actually wrong. What about one thirty? Okay. 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 But that's very, very close. Very no. Close. It'll be 10 o'clock, wouldn't it? The infusion is going from 9 to 9.30. And if it's 30 minutes after the infusion stops, it's 10 o'clock. But just 20 hours. No, no, no. I, I, and I, I was very clear. I was very clear. And, and again, this is understanding the concept. At 20 hours, it's at steady state. Okay. okay. But if you draw it at 20 hours, where are we on the plasma concentration time curve? You gave this, 12 hours later, you gave that. At 20 hours, mm -hmm. where would it be? It'll be at steady state, but what, what is at steady state? This concentration right here? Because that's at 20 hours. In it? You don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to know. Every one of these is doing like this. Mm -hmm. So here, we did right there. Here, you did right there. Here mm -hmm. is your third one. So you said, and this is at 12 hours. This is at 24. Mm -hmm. At 20 hours, we probably over here somewhere. We ain't right here. But why do they stay at steady state? What do you mean? It's going to be at steady state from that point on. So you need a, you need that. What you can actually do, so this will be the one at 20 hours, at dose three, one, two, at dose three, is the C min at steady state of your second dose. It should be. It should be. So you, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait until this drug to get this semen. Your first level was actually the semen that you wanted to get. You want to get the semen. Right here. This is those one. I can get the semen right before those three. Because we're at 24 hours by that point, which is greater than 20. So that C min is that steady state. So my C min. Thirty PM. <laughs> Eight thirty AM. Right before I give this. Thirty minutes before I give this. So why wouldn't it be nine thirty? Why wouldn't it be nine thirty? Yeah. Nine thirty what? Um, What's going to happen? If it's 9.30 what? A.M. or P.M.? A.M. <laughs> yeah, because... Is the C-Max coming before C-Min? The C-Max is better than that. What's the difference between this C-Min at steady state and this one? What's the difference? The but what's the difference in the value? Not the time, in the value. At steady state, it's going to be the same. Yeah. So in your um, in your example, yeah, the time is different. So I'm going to give you a scenario. If you're the patient laying on the table, and we need to make sure that this isn't shutting down your kidney, do you want us to do it as soon as we can, or as 
as soon as we can. So if there's no difference in between this semen and that semen, why are you waiting? Why are you waiting? What about the difference in the C-max? There is a difference in the C-max here because we're not at steady state. The C-max here is going to be one hour after you started the dose, right? So that C-max is at 10 p.m. And is at 10 p.m. Are we out 20 hours? No. So that C max is going to be lower than what this one actually is. So if you're trying to dose off a lower C max than what it already is, then you may overdose. So your C max is not at steady state until here, but your C min is at steady state after the second dose. So your C min you would draw before the C max. And why wouldn't C max be at 9.30? At 9.30? 9.30 a.m., meaning. Here? Mm-hmm. You're doing an infusion for 30 minutes. 9.30, you just stopped your infusion. I thought 9 o'clock is when you stopped. 9 o'clock is when you started. You gave it, and you have to wait 30 minutes. So you gave it. Is that not correct? Then you wait. We started the infusion at 9. Oh. When did it stop? At 9.30. At 9.30. So 30 minutes after that, it's 10 o'clock. Mm. Y'all got it? These are all great questions. I, 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 somebody talking to me. Oh, okay. 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 So Elaborate in what way? How, how are you confused? So I the, Hold on now. So I just So you sure? Because you're saying the infusion rate was at 0.5. That's 30 minutes. I will say what I thought. You sure? It's a great question. Um, I, I I would say don't try to understand the thirty minutes because it could be any time or something. It could be any time. Yeah. Could be any time. No, there's no mathematical reason as to why it's thirty minutes. The reason why it's done like this is because we all know, just like you're looking at here, we all know what time we're gonna start the infusion. Mm -hmm. yes. So when are we going to obtain the levels? Yes. This is mathematically derived. We know that at 30 minutes after the infusion, it's already been tested that we should have reached our highest level. We're just getting to see men so we can know whatever that minimum concentration was before we infuse the dose. Because if I know what this minimum concentration is, mm -hmm. And then I infuse the dose and I know what the C max is. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a relationship? Of whatever this is. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a relationship? Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, I can calculate the contribution of each dose, right? It gave you an initial concentration. Then the second part of the equation gave you what? Accumulation, Accumulation of the other doses. Mm -hmm. Right? So the contribution of each dose is the exact same. Mm. What we don't know is how much drug is accumulated at that point. Okay. But you do know it if you know how much drug was in the body at the time that you infused it. So don't try to understand why is that 30 minutes? It's 30 minutes because, hey, 
Bottom line, give it before you give this doggone infusion. So 30 minutes was around them. But these are the guidelines that you need to know. 30 minutes after the infusion stops, it should be at C max, and you want to attain the C min 30 minutes before the next dose. And is that a, is that a standard across for all antibiotics or mm. just certain class? It's a good question. Um, it's not a standard across uh, most antibiotics. You're not obtaining drug levels for. Okay. Well, I mean the weight based dosing. I should be more. Busy. Most antibiotics, you're not obtaining dosing levels. Okay. So is this the case for vancomycin and for uh, aminoglycosides? Yes, these are the ones you're going to uh, commonly get uh, dosing levels for. Okay. All right. So for piperacillin, tazobactam, we're not getting dosing levels. So it's a yeah. All right. So... Uh, Everything that I've asked you to do, at least in the first problem, you should know how to do that. We'll summarize it here. Dose of weight could be actual body weight, ideal body weight, or adjusted body weight, right? Mm -hmm. What circumstance is it total body weight? Vancomycin. Vancomycin. We'll, we'll pick up vancomycin later. Aminoglycosides are concentration dependent, which means what? Higher peaks, better. Yes. 50% of the taste of back town, that's the time dependent, which means what? Time of the infusion. Time of the infusion. Mm -hmm. All right. Y'all have a great weekend. Thank Ooh, you. Thank you. Oh, oh. oh, don't forget. Um, You said you was going to give us the breakdown for Monday. That's what I was about to say. Oh, oh. <laughs> Somebody asked me, and I didn't remember who it was. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for not letting me forget. All right. So, breakdown for Monday. And then I have quizzes, too. If y'all want them back. <laughs> um, breakdown for Monday. We'll have 15 multiple choice mm -hmm. and five problems for a total of 20. So, huh? Sorry. I think he's really good. I didn't understand what you were saying. I didn't understand what you were saying. You want to know how many of mine, how many of Dr. Phillips? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, this is the this is the loudest, the most talkative y'all been since all day, God, We've been Maybe I should have just talked about this and then walked out. I'm over here sweating and whatever. I had to turn the light on. She bothered me, sleep on me, man. So Dr. Felder will have seven multiple choice. I have eight. Dr. Felder will do two problems. I'll do three. Ooh. Is that exciting? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Half and half. Half and half. Half and half. So based on what we've learned thus far, what takeaways you think we should go away this weekend? Make sure you focus on this and you know. Yeah. Make sure you focus on this. Okay, come on, Dr. Yes. Take that. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Please. So if you if you uh I think it was you, Leslie, that asked me, and I left you. Man, I left you. Please bring it back. Come on, come back. I left it on my desk. We'll be uh, here. I think it was you asked me, can I look in the book somewhere? And I know it was uh, chapter nine. <laughs> you know, what is it? I left it, man. It's chapter nine. I know that for sure. Huh? No, I'm trying to find, I, I had a little note just for you. And it was a little posted, but it wasn't a receipt. I don't need this. I need a little note. Uh, I had oh a little God. posted note with the notes on there you asked. So for so I, I don't really like uh, chapter nine for intermittent IV infusions because it talks about intermittent IV infusions, but it gave no practice problems. No. What no. can we practice? So that's why I gave you uh, practice problems and stuff like that in the in the lecture as well as homework. So you have um, problems that you can you can go over, and I think that those uh, problems are reflective of, of of what you'll see on the test. But as far as the concept, so multiple choice that I, if I were you, if you still don't understand what I'm talking about, make sure that you read through uh, chapter nine. Chapter nine is not just 
um, I, multiple IV infusions. It's talking about all multiple dosing regimens. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's what Dr. Felder was talking about before me. He just wasn't talking about uh, infusions. He talked about multiple oral dosing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, you're probably reading chapter nine already, but for the concepts, you definitely <laughs> need to kind of go through that. You don't understand uh, drug accumulation. You don't understand how it's contributing. If you don't uh, understand uh, some of the things that I was talking about, about how what your adjustment is uh, impacting C min, C max, mm -hmm. uh, go back to the chapter. If you don't understand loading dosing or steady state, it's all talked about in the chapter. And there are some learning questions uh, that I did see in there. I don't, don't quote me, because I don't have my note, but I think it was like three through seven or something like that. Can't remember, they had them all in a row that was kind of talking about the basic concepts that actually apply to all of them, whether it's oral or IV. Those basic concepts of drug accumulation, steady state, all of those uh, types of things were just uh, conceptual uh, based things. So they did have that. They did have some frequently asked questions that explained it as well. So make sure you really understand you know, what's going on uh, in those uh, changes. Um, do you mind clarifying the, uh, I remember you spoke about it in Wednesday's lab, whether you use the actual body weight versus the adjusted, because sure. some people are still confused about it. Sure, that. yeah. I make, I say it again. For Monday's exam, the weight-based principles, meaning the dosing weight that you will use, the drug is decoration right now. Not right now, for Monday's exam. So for the final, as I mentioned, things we're talking about today don't really apply to Monday's exam. So the whole vancomycin, volume and distribution, we only use actual body weight. That's not the case for the exam, okay, on Monday. Just use your straight dosing that um, you've been doing so far. Being able to distinguish between Aminoglycosides and vancomycin is not what the goal is for this particular exam, okay? For the final, yes, but for this particular exam, no. So that means that uh, when will we use the actual body weight? For the, for the final, but vancomycin. No. For the final, for the final. Less, I ain't talking about the final. You ain't if it's less than the ideal. If it's, if it's less, less oh yeah, when it's less. Oh, you're talking about in that sense, yes, and it's less. If it's less than the ideal body weight, you know. if it's thirty, if the uh, actual body weight is thirty percent greater than the ideal body weight, you're using the adjust. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Right. So which one are you going with? Twenty percent or thirty percent? Look, y'all told me that what y'all would talk thirty percent. So that's what we've been using for this whole okay. time. Okay. I'm just telling you, and anything I'm telling you that 30% is not correct. It's not 30%. Anything that you look up in a reference will tell you it's 20 to 30%. So some institutions may have 20%, some may have 30%. So don't go out there, it's always 30% or something. No, it's not. Who taught you that? Read your book, it'll tell you 20 to 30%. Some people choose 20, some people choose 30. It's not just 30. But if that's what you guys were taught, I just stay consistent so you're not confused. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna for just so we won't get confused, just stick to thirty. Just stick to thirty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Comments? Concerns? I can't see <laughs> The answers for uh, the questions and homework? Okay, yeah. I can Make do sure that. Make sure we're on the right path. I can put the answers out there for uh, the problems that we've been assigned to. Yeah, I thought about it and, and uh, now. Nah. I'm not going to. Uh, just the, the question uh, Alexis said, can you assign us some um, new practice problems? So my first um, thought was, okay, I can pull out some new problems, but how would you get them? 
And so if I sent you problems, just like what Leslie is asking, well, then I have to send you the answers. I have to work it out for you and show you that. I know if I send you problems with the answers worked out, it's meaningless. I'm spending more time than you. Some of you may work them out, but most of you are just going to look at it and try to see if you can memorize how to do it. And I guarantee you, you ain't going to get it right on the test. So that's not helpful. As I mentioned before, if I sign you something, whether you get it right or wrong, just try to work it out. And I can, I can help you fix it. And in most situations, I haven't seen that. So another option was, okay, I can build it in Blackboard. That way it'll tell you if it's bad or not. But um, I don't have time for it. But will you have time to post um I have time to post the answers today? of what you have. Yep. So we can start studying and use it. Yeah. Right, yeah. I got the answers already, so I can post that. Yeah, thanks. That'd be good today. What? <laughs> Tweet. <laughs>